Before I move on with examples 1.11 up to 1.13, okay, so I want to go back to example 1.10 and draw the corresponding diagram for it. Okay, so we already have all of our elements noted here, and I'm going to be doing this in a different color. So we mentioned that we have the largest one would be or the longest time period would be six years. Okay, so we're gonna have year zero. Remember you always start from zero. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so let me the number zero, one, two, three, four, five and 6. Okay, so what's going on here? First of all you have a P which is a deposit. Even though you're depositing this into an investment account you deal with these diagrams, the ups and downs, as if you had the money on hand. So if you're depositing this uh, amount, these five thousand dollars, into an investment account, like I said, even though it's an investment and it's a good thing, you do not have that money with you in your hands so this is gonna go down so here you're gonna have P equals five thousand dollars then it says that the A you will be withdrawing it for five years starting next year so you start in year zero so starting next year year one you're gonna start withdrawing 1,000 and you're gonna do this for five years so you have one two three four and five so you have an A of 1,000 per year do not forget to write down the interest rate somewhere near your diagram so you have I equals six percent per year Okay, so going back to the A, right here you have A for five years. So you only go up to here, so N will be equal to five. One way to remember or to be able to identify the Ns when it comes to A is that your N will be equal to the number of A arrows that you have. So if you have A for five years, that means that your N is also going to be five. You stop withdrawing here, and then at the end of the sixth year, you're going to withdraw the remaining money, which is an unknown. So I'm going to make the arrow different, because I don't know if it's going to be more or if it's going to be less. But this F will be your unknown. And your N for the F will be equal to six years. Example 1.11. Reread example 1.7 where P equals 10,000 where P equal to $10,000 borrowed at 8% per year and F is sought after 5 years. Construct the cash flow diagram. Then again, we're not solving, we're just focusing on the cash flow diagrams. We already did example 1.7, so I'm just going to rewrite what we had identified. So P equal to 10,000 we have I of 8% per year. Our F is the unknown, and we have N for five years. Okay. So we're going to draw our diagram for five years. It's going to be 0, 1, 2, three, four, and five. We have P that we're borrowing. So P goes in year zero and we're borrowing the money so that means that we are going to have that money. And then our other capital letter, which is going to be our uh, second cash flow, is sought after five years. So that means that your F is going to be here. So F 
is your unknown in year five. That's because you, if you borrow money, you have to pay it back. So that's why I'm putting it uh, going down. Now you cannot leave it like that. Remember, you al always, always need to include your interest rate somewhere in the diagram because of the equivalence term. Because if we don't put, if we don't have an interest here, then it would be exactly the same amount because you're not accumulating interest. So this I equals to eight percent per year just tells you that the F will change, the time value of money will change after five years.